Hi friends, this is continuation to my GCP interview questions. I have covered till types of assessment uh, you perform. Let us continue with the next questions. So usually interviewers may touch like what are the migration tools available and uh, what are the different processes within that. May, they may ask about agent and agent class uh, type of migrations. Uh, so better you have to go through little deeper in case if you are going to attend as an architect or migration related or infrastructure manager or infrastructure architect. So you have to be thorough like what are the different options available and at the same time what are the internal processes how that occurs and happens. I'm not going to deep dive but let us just see quickly what are those. Cloud Foundation Toolkit is a best practice open source ready-made reference template uh, for deployment manager and terraform whereas migrate to containers it intelligently extract migrate and modernize applications to run natively on containers in google kubernetes engine migrate to computing engine is like fast flexible and safe migration to google cloud with migrate for compute engine whereas ramp a holistic end-to-end uh, -end migration program to help simply and accelerate your migration path. SAP on Google Cloud maintain a business continuity on secure cloud that gives you business agility while allows you to maximize the value of your SAP data. VMware engine is uh, to migrate and run your VMware workloads natively on Google Cloud in just a few clicks. Coming to the data migration, uh, BigQuery data transfer service. It automate data movement into BigQuery. Zero coding foundation for a BigQuery data warehouse. So data backfills to recover from outages or gaps. Coming to the databases, it migrates uh, as ease to fully manage database. Move from proprietary licenses to open source databases. Also modernize from traditional databases to scalable cloud, in cloud native databases. Coming to the database migration service, it is easy of use reduces migration complexity and serverless experience eliminates the operational burden of migrations. Repli replicate data continuously for minimal downtime. Coming to the Oracle workloads, bare metal solution to lift and shift workloads, migrate to compatible open source platforms. Migration, Microsoft SQL Server, bring your existing SQL Server licenses and run them on the compute engine. And it helps to migrate and run Microsoft SQL Server and Compute Engine or use managed Cloud SQL to reduce licenses and infrastructure cost. Transfer appliance, uh, transfer data for archival migrations or analytics, capture sensor data for machine learning and analysis. Coming to the storage transfer service, tools to help you perform a data transfer either from another cloud provider or from your private data center. So these are the few things like even it helps migrating from S3 to Google Cloud and I'm not going to deep dive any of these options. Please do some small uh, POCs kind of thing before you go to interview. Moving on to the other question, uh, explain network concepts. Uh, everybody might be surprised like what kind of question is this? This is very basic but uh, surprisingly in one of the interview, I don't know whether we have to call it a stupid interview or the regular one. In that interview, I was asked, I was personally asked about PAN, LAN, MAN, WAN. I mean, he asked basically network concepts, but I was about to explain him point to oh, site, site to site, uh, maybe the express route and all those stuff, but he was not interested in that. He asked just only the basic concepts. Uh, suddenly, I, was got I got panic and I could not answer that. So just to avoid such kind of situation, just be prepared uh, or you know, brush up on this type of uh, basic terminology so that you won't get panic. So PAN is a personal area network. Uh, maybe like your laptop, tab and few Bluetooth devices are connected. That is just within the square meter around a person. Coming to the local area network, uh, usually it is in buildings. Maybe you can consider as a school building, which is like 10 meters or 100 meters or 1 kilometer radius, uh, which is uh, scattered. You can see the right side picture also. It will give you the idea like how the local area network is connected. Coming to the MAN, metropolitan area network, it is like within the city, maybe 10 kilometers radius, definitely larger than the LAN and multiple LANs connected to a centralized network also can be considered as a man. Coming to the van, it can be a country, wide area network or a continent. 
uh, it could be 100 kilometers radius or 1000 kilometers radius kind of uh, stuff so just uh, have a look uh, as i faced and i was panic and i could not uh, answer personally iac advantages are automation and challenges so what are the advantages with iac infrastructure as code what are the challenges we faced so this is also again most frequently asked question provisioning infrastructure manually is risky and time taking process that is the reason we actually adapt iac uh, when you do it uh, with the human efforts definitely there is a high possibility of the human errors that is the reason uh, automation or uh, the infrastructure as code will help you to reduce such kind of human errors moving on we can build replicate uh, environments faster by using same code as we are writing it with the code if i want to have the similar vm or similar type of environment in the other region or in the other uh, availability zone it is straightforward you can just use the same code and run that consistency in configuration and setup uh, as you are configuring definitely the configurations will be matching even for the uh, other environments once it is tested and uh, set up financial savings as developers can focus on the wide variety of other critical tasks uh, by reducing their effort on this manual effort uh, definitely it will it will be the huge financial saving for the company and for the team increase the efficiency in sdlc in the whole uh, development process software development life cycle process like devops or continuous processes will help to increase the efficiency coming to the challenges yeah so coding languages are plenty for infrastructure as code one is json hash corp configuration languages aml ruby depending on what you are using whether it is a terraform or azure resource manager which is arm templates you have to wisely choose one of the option which can best match for your requirement also check which skill set is available in the market like people wise then moving on to security assessment processes legacy security tools and processes might not really good enough to secure uh, infrastructure as code so we have to keep an eye on that these are the challenging iec monitoring can be challenging because tracking and monitoring the changes by where and whom and cost tracking or a uh, few challenges but you need to you can find easily the workarounds uh, these are the challenges of the iec moving on to the migration best practices uh, there are pre migration best practices during migration and after migration so pre migration you can do, you have to define migration strategy with those strategy you can't jump in understand application inventory determine application dependencies analysis of applications to infrastructure profile the data for data migrations and physical moves have regular discussions with stakeholders assess all the workloads well understand sls ola rtos rpos compliance security standards check if you can adapt a few manual services to reduce the maintenance hurdle utilize assessment tools and identify right migration tools thoroughly go through the support contracts so these are the few best practices people definitely will ask you what are the migration best practices you can pick at least few of them i don't expect everyone to speak in the same language but you choose the pointers and uh, as per your earlier experience during the migration create a pilot project without creating a pilot project we never jump into that and always choose infrastructure uh, automation we discussed about iac in the previous slide and always follow the step by step approach and leverage uh, cloud security features after the migration you have to continuously monitor your environments what are deployed and validate all the workloads use the cloud native monitoring tools monitor your billing and uses these are the post deployment or post migration uh, best practices moving on what are the migration challenges there are plenty of migration challenges a uh, few of them are here data movement uh, to cloud uh, if you have a huge amount of data in your on premises such as like terabytes or pet petabytes then it will be hard to move there are plenty of uh, ways to move the data definitely you can uh, select that but it's a challenging job and hard coded ips is another uh, uh, challenge similar vp vm types or hardware configurations are unavailable sometimes you know the same uh, vms or compute engines may not be available uh, as per your on premises data center uh, systems so os incompatibility is another uh, thing like if you are using some legacy os systems that may not be available in the selected cloud you have to be you have to be selective and you have to do some kind of r and d before you make your decision skill shortage estimating migration cost legacy application migration security and compliance are few more challenges but you, you have to elaborate while you are explaining to your interviewer so 
that's it for today i'll come up with more videos please post your interview questions so that i can make more videos and which will be helpful for others as well thank you for watching my videos